and <laughs> welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Kristen, also known as Volenvine, pretty much everywhere on the interwebs. Welcome to my little spot on the web uh, where I chat about primarily knitting, sewing, and making all the things in Brooklyn, New York. As always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all those things with me. And yeah, this is a knitting podcast, contrary to what the, the background might suggest. Um, if you are a regular to this podcast, welcome back. Uh, you might notice something different about the background. Uh, today I'm recording in my boudoir <laughs> because my craft room is just a tad noisy today. Of course, Murphy's Law of all days, uh, today's the day that our neighbors decide to repave their sidewalk. So there is, so before I started setting up, there was a lot of jackhammering, a lot of banging and really not good conditions for recording a podcast. And of course, when I brought everything into the bedroom, of course, the noise all stopped. That That's how life goes sometimes. But if you're new to the podcast, welcome. Thank you so much for checking me out. Uh, again, this is not the normal setup, nor is this the normal format of the podcast, because today, today, my friends, we are doing, we are talking the Rhinebeck Hall. <laughs> and if you already subscribe to the channel, which, which you should totally do subscribe, like and subscribe if you're into knitting and making all the things and uh, everything that I mentioned earlier, uh, then then you're in good company. But uh, yeah, if you tuned into my last vlog, I vlogged about Rhinebeck, going to Rhinebeck and India Untangled. So in this episode, I'm basically going to be regaling you with my wool piggery, my Rhinebeck slash India Untangled yarn haul, and uh, talk about what projects I brought with me and what projects I'm currently working on. So, you know, a little mix of both regular format and non-regular format. But anyway, I hope you're into that type of thing. So just a couple of administrati things before I get into what I've been making this week. Uh, it, last week, I posed a question to you guys about my shop update segment. Uh, it's the segment where I chat about what's going to be in my shop update because if you are not familiar, hi, I am the dyer behind Vine Yarns. It's my hand dyed yarn company. And yeah, in the past on the show, I generally have a segment where I show what yarns I've dyed and what's gonna be in the shop, bases, etc. However, I know there are some of you that are just here for the knitting and I want to keep this a relatively short, time-friendly podcast. So um, first of all, thank you so much for all the feedback that uh, you've given me uh, if you did comment in last week's video. It was super helpful and I definitely took them all to heart. After thinking about it for quite some time, I have actually decided to nix the shop update segment altogether. I know that's not gonna make everybody happy, but at the same time, I wanna keep these episodes relatively under 30 minutes, 20 minutes, so to speak, within that time frame, if that makes sense. Uh, and I know not everybody's into the shop update segment, so I figure if you are into uh, my shop updates and my yarns, which by the way, thank you so much if you are, uh, the best way to keep in the loop about those things going forward is to either subscribe to my newsletter, uh, which I will link to in the description box below, where you know I will send out a weekly newsletter letting you know what colorways, what yarns, and all other news surrounding Villain Vine yarns. Um, so all you have to do is enter your email and that will be delivered to your inbox on a weekly basis. Uh, and the other way to keep up with my shop updates uh, will be through Instagram. So uh, I feel like that's, in general, that is where I get the most traffic to my online shop. So uh, definitely if you are, if you wanna catch an update, those are definitely the, the avenues to keep an eye out for. So I'm definitely going through a phase of trying new things, uh, trial and error, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. And anyway, thank you so much for uh, coming along with me on that ride. So I feel like things are going in a good direction right now. I have a good feeling. So anyway, um, thank you for uh, indulging my spiel right there. But uh, I think that is it for Administrati. I'm actually working with a 40 millimeter lens this week because the bedroom, while it looks very put together today, by the way, this gave me an excuse to actually make the bed and tidy up the bedroom just a little bit, but everywhere else there's stuff around. So I'm actually working with a 40 millimeter lens right now, which is a very tight lens and blurs out the background. So um, I have to mind my headroom, whereas my normal lens that I use, the 24 millimeter lens is more wide and you get a nice shot of my craft room where I usually record. Um, however, you know, just, you know, just to keep things a little private, you know, in the bedroom, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working with a tighter lens. So anyway, that was my uh, photography geek out this week. So anyway, all right, moving along, let's get into what I've been making this week. But first, just a quick word from my amazing sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, tech, and more, even sewing in the fiber arts. 
As you know, I'm improving my photo skills and doing so by binge watching photography classes on Skillshare. And because I know you love learning new things too, I partnered up with Skillshare and they are offering my viewers two months free to try their platform. So give Skillshare a go and learn something new. Just click on the link in the description box below, entering the code at checkout and enjoy. And thanks Skillshare. All right, let's talk whips. Uh, no finished objects this week, but I do have some new cast-ons and some works in progress that I've been putting little dents in. Although I will be, I will be totally honest, uh, I did not put a dent in most of the stuff that I've already had on the needles because when you go to Rhinebeck, Chances are, from from personal experience, I only ever work on socks or mindless knits. I bring, I always end up bringing like three projects along with me and only end up working on socks. So just to experiment this year, I only brought along a sock and I cast it on on the way there. And what do you know? That's all that I worked on. And I am all about traveling light. We took the train and we were carrying bags with us and you know, I, I don't want to be lugging around too much weight with me, so uh, you know I definitely packed as light as I could, and if that means just bringing along one project, so be it. And thankfully, it all worked out. By the way, if you want to uh, check out my vlog for my the Rhinebeck Indian Tangled recap, I will pop it in the doobly doo up here and link to it in the description box below. Uh, Laura also, Laura, my friend who is uh, Jinx Handmade on Instagram, she came from Texas and stayed with me, and we headed up to Rhinebeck together. So she also. So recently published a, uh, a Rhinebeck recap, so I will link to that as well. Definitely check it out if you want to get both of our perspectives. It's it's a lot of fun. So, uh, but yeah, I cast on a new sock, and here is the sock in question, as Ellie from Skander Knits always says. Uh, and this is yarn that has been sitting in my stash for about I want to say two years. This is Molly Girl Yarns, and this is a custom colorway that she dyed for uh, P-Town Pearl in Provincetown, Massachusetts. And if you watch the podcast, you might uh, recall that Dennis and I spend our summers usually up in Cape Cod where he has a summer house. Um, him and his family has a, have a summer house up there, and we always go up and we take a drive to Provincetown, which is at the, the tippy tippy point of of Cape Cod and uh, there is a really nice tiny but mighty yarn shop called P-Town Pearl. Uh, we didn't make it up there this year but uh, if you are in the area definitely stop by. Brian is an awesome LYS owner and he's adorable, sweet and sadly I did not see him today. I did not see him at Rhinebeck but I'm sure he was there. Um, we just didn't cross paths but anyway. I digress. Uh, this is a one of a, um, a one of a kind colorway. I don't think it's one of a kind. I think he might still stock it because uh, Angela, who owns Molly Girl Yarns, I've actually met her. She's really awesome, a wonderful hand dyer, um, and I was really surprised to see that she had dyed him a custom colorway for his shop using all of his uh, branding colors. So I'm gonna see if I can. There you go. So lots of periwinkles, greens, yellows, uh, pops of pink in there. Um, and because his logo is an oyster, I happen to have an oyster uh, progress keeper that was just totally appropriate to put on there. So there you go. Um, and this is by Cakery Bakery, I believe. I'll put a link to her Etsy shop below, but I love oysters so much. So I had to get that progress keeper and then I saw the yarn and I put two and two together. I'm like, yes, it was a match made in heaven. So this is how much yarn, this is how much sock knitting I got done up at Rhinebeck. Okay, moving along. Uh, I do have some progress to share with you on my Radiate pullover uh, because I did, well, not, not a huge amount of progress, but some progress. I think you can see the yoke a little bit better now because I did knit more on the body. So. Here is what it looks like so far. And the yarn is my hand dyed yarn, Wool and Fine Yarns, on my Smitten DK base. And the colorways that I'm using are Shallow Grave, which is this kind of like lavender peachy pink color up here. And then the main color is Deadly Nightshade. And it's dyed on my Smitten DK base, which is uh, Superwash, Merino Nylon, and Cashmere. And it's very buttery, buttery soft, guys. Um, so yeah, and it, again, it looks super tiny, but once it blocks out, it's gonna stretch because that's the case with uh, most superwash yarns. They, after you block them, they stretch vertically and then spread out just ever so slightly. So it's gonna stretch, I think. So uh, yeah, and the other thing that I wanted to mention is that I'm not doing any waist shaping. Uh, the pattern calls for a bit of waist shaping when you get 
down when you knit past uh, the sleeve join um, for a couple of inches. However, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not that much into waist shaping. I don't know why, but for this one, I'm just gonna omit that. Maybe I'm just lazy and just want to knit in the round and around and around. Who knows? Um, so yeah, that's that's the only modification that I did. And uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is helical knitting. Uh, <laughs> So if you watch last week's podcast, I talked about uh, the importance of alternating skeins in when knitting a garment if using uh, hand dyed yarn. So uh, it prevents it, it prevents uh, any abrupt changes and shifts in color. It prevents pooling. It prevents flashing, uh, which is an effect of hand dyed yarn if you just knit it straight from the cake as opposed to alternating it. Um, and I did men and I did point to a. Um, a tutorial from Very Pink Knits. However, thank you so much to everybody who mentioned helical knitting or helix knitting uh, and pointed me to Grace of Babel's Travels. Uh, Babel's Traveling, I can never remember how to pronounce it. Um, it's Babel's Traveling Yarns. Anyway, I love Grace. She's a good friend of mine. Um, unfortunately, she's all the way in Ireland and we only get to see each other but once a year. But um, Grace is amazing and I definitely recommend that you check out her YouTube channel. She vlogs a lot. Um, so if you're uh, into traveling, armchair travel, her podcast and vlogs are definitely the thing to check out. But um, she just released perfect timing, this really awesome tutorial on helix knitting, which is another way, which is another uh, technique for alternating skeins when knitting with hand dyed yarn. And the way I was showing on the podcast was that I was knitting to the beginning of the row, dropping the yarn and twisting the new yarn up and around and continuing on with that. However, that was creating a, uh, a jog and kind of like a un an unwanted seam, so to speak. Here you can see I have a little bit of twisting going on, uh, and that is where I dropped the yarn and continued on with the other strand of yarn from the other cake. Um, however, with helical knitting, uh, I'm not gonna do the tutorial because that's, that's a totally different story. Check out Grace's tutorial. But it's a genius method where you uh, stop three stitches before you picked up with the last strand and then slip those stitches and then continue on and it creates this staggered effect uh, and there is essentially no seam to be had uh, when all is said and done. So really brilliant. Thank you so much to all of you who uh, raised that point to me and thank you so much to Grace for the amazing tutorial. Again, I will link to it in the description box below or the doobly-doo up here. So uh, yes, uh, I'm trying to think what else I wanted to say about my Radiate pullover. Um, again, it's a pattern by Hoagy Locatelli. I'm not sure if I mentioned that when I started talking about this, but it's amazing total potato chip knit, meaning you just want to knit one more row, one more row, cannot put it down. Um, and I cannot wait to have this done. So yes. Okay, next up is a project that has not made an appearance on the podcast for a while. And that is the Husbeast sweater, as my friend Nina Ine, <laughs> uh, the host of This Old Knit, refers to husband sweaters as the Husbeast sweater, because seriously, you guys, this is taking me forever. It's taking me forever. Um, and it's driving me just a little bit batty because while in hindsight, this is not a complicated pattern, it's essentially straight stockinette in the round so far with some mild detail, mild ribbing detail at the sides, at the seams. The yarn is no picnic to work with. It's really wreaking, not wreaking havoc on my hands, I'm being over dramatic, but it's a little hard on the hands. Um, and this is the Rift Pullover by Jared Flood or Brooklyn Tweed. Uh, and I am using Peace Fleece yarn in their worsted weight base. I don't know what that is exactly. Again, description box, all the information will be there, but this is yarn that I picked up in uh, when we were in Maine over the summer. We picked it up at Halcyon Yarns at, when we were in Maine. So um, really, really lovely yarn. Uh, this is going really slowly because yeah, I am, these aren't, I don't know why. I think it's because of the, the wool itself on, smaller needles. I had to go down several, I had to go down, I think about like two needle sizes to meet gauge. And it is knitting up a little densely, but I did create a swatch. I did meet gauge and it loosened up significantly after I created the swatch. So I'm not concerned about it being too stiff or too dense of a fabric. Um, but at the same time, like trying to knit, I've gotten faster, but it's still, 
a little hard on my hands. Um, but I can show you. Yeah, I've gotten faster, but after a while, after a couple of rows, it's just, mm, the struggle is real, my friends. Uh, it's, yeah, labor of love, but I love my husband, so I will suffer. I will, I will, I will muddle through. I will muddle through and he, he shall have a sweater this winter. And my goal is to have it finished by Thanksgiving. He will wear this to Thanksgiving dinner. Mark my words, it will happen. Hold me to it, hold me to it. Um, because yeah, he's been asking for a sweater for a really, really, really long time and the time has come, he will have a sweater. But anyway, I think it's working up pretty well and hopefully I will have more to report on my progress next time. So yay, ripped pullover, um, husband sweater. Next up, I have a new cast on and Laura, if you are watching this, this might come as no surprise because I was really itching to cast something on with some of the stash that I picked up from Rhinebeck and Indian Tangled. And she's like, oh yeah, it's gonna happen. As soon as I leave, you're gonna cast something on. And she was, she was very, she was very right. Um, and instead of digging into some, you know, full skeins, I had purchased some mini skeins from Lambstrings Wool. No, I'm sorry, Lambstrings Yarn uh, at Indian Tangled. And these colors were just like calling out to me, jumping out at me. And I was like, I must do something with you. I must do something with you now. <laughs> and of course I started browsing Ravelry and I'm in the market for a new hat, new fall slash winter hat. And there was a pattern sitting in my library for quite some time already. And that is the Vanilla Fog Hat by Andrea. Maori. And it's a simple brioche knit hat. <laughs> it's a pattern, it's a brioche pattern uh, that's knit by holding two strands of fingering weight yarns together so you get the marled effect. And looking at the yarns from this set of mini skeins, I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be perfect. So uh, I cast on, yeah, so you got lots of uh, na like navy blue is not really my jam, but the colors that she used in and these skeins are just so beautiful and I don't know, they really they really spoke to me. And I'm holding it together with kind of like a blue, like sea green blue uh, mini skein and I'm blanking, I don't off the top of my head know what each colorway is named, but uh, they just really wanted to go together. That's what they look like separately. Yay! So these are two other skeins from the set and I'm eventually going to fade them in uh, to the hat at some point, very soon I think. So, um, you know, I'm gonna try and create like a little faded effect. So, um, stop knitting with the blue and then start knitting with these two together because they're very similar. And then after a couple of inches, I'm just going to continue on with these two together. So I have no idea how it's gonna look, but fingers crossed, it'll it'll look, it'll look nice. Um, but yeah, definitely check out Lambstring's yarn. Her booth at Indian Tangled was just phenomenal. Like all of our colors just made my heart sing and I wanted to buy everything in there, but uh, I had to pace myself. I had to pace myself. Um, but since we are talking about Lambstrings Fiber and Indian Tangled, and that is pretty much all that I have to say about works in progress at this point, let's just move into the haul because I'm sure that's why you guys are here. You want to see what I got from, from Ryan Beth. But as I mentioned, Lara, who is uh, Jinx Handmade, and Emily, uh, who is Slow Fashion Marvel, we headed up Friday morning uh, to get to Indian Tangled uh, that night. And I got a tote. I got a tote bag because you can't go to a festival and not get a tote. But here's this year's tote. And you guys, I am so in love with this. I think this is their best tote to date or the best is logo design to date. I think it's just so adorable. Um, Anyway, got a tote and it came in handy, let me tell you, because I, I did some damage. I did some damage. But yeah, the mini skeins aren't the only thing that I got from the Lambstrings uh, yarn booth. I also picked up this skein, which is her Home Again color. I think I think this is her, the special color that she dyed specifically for Indian Tangled. I could be wrong, but she had like a whole basket separated from her normal, uh, from her other other colorways that were on display so but I was like as I was walking through her booth it was tiny but she had so many beautiful colors and I started picking out skeins I'm like oh this one oh this one oh this one and then I'm like I want to make I want to make a so faded sweater pullover with all these colors and then <sighs> when I start getting into the mindset of fading colors together that's when I start to check out and get overwhelmed. So I had like 10 skeins in my hand. And I'm like, I don't know what to pick. So I put everything back. Um, 
one day, one day I will come up with a fade, but in the meantime, just coming up with fades is very stressful for me. So yeah, I just called it, I, this one spoke to me the most, so it came home with me, but yeah, really, really pleased with this purchase. This one is was actually a gift. Uh, Caroline, who is Dunder Knit, she has the very new Knitting Vicariously podcast on YouTube, which you should totally check out. I will link to her as well in the show notes and doobly-doo up here. Um, but she came to Rhinebeck, and you guys, I, I first met Caroline at EYF this this year, this I almost I, bleh, I almost want to say last year, but it was this year. Um, but she made it to Rhinebeck, and I was just so excited to see her again. And she was so lovely. She she gifted me a skein of King Ching Ching. It's Ching fibers, um, in this really lovely mauvelicious shade. It's her oyster color, right? Eh? Chick knows me. Um, so Caroline, thank you, thank you so much. This is my very first skein of uh, Ching fibers and it's gonna be something special and you're awesome and lovely and oh my gosh, yeah. Um, oh, I'm, I'm just so like, I'm so happy that we've become friends because she's just the warmest, kindest, funnest person, you know, like you could ever meet. And I'm just so sad she lives across the pond for me. Like a lot of my friends that I want, wish I could spend more time with live across the pond. And Caroline is definitely one of them. And I'm just so excited to be going back to EYF this year. And I hope she makes it again, you know, so I can hug her and squeeze her and, oh, Caroline, you are amazing. So I'm, I'm gushing. I'm really gushing at this point. But anyway, thank you for this lovely, lovely skein. It will be very special and dear in my stash. So Yay. And then I, one of my per first purchases uh, at Indie Untangled was, well, you know, you make a beeline to the Spin Cycle Yarns booth <laughs> because, you know, I, guys, I can't, I, I saw the Spin Cycle girls there and I totally fangirled. Um, I didn't, you know, I don't think they knew who I was, but I, I'm totally blanking other names. Um, but yeah, I totally fangirled over them because I watched their interview on Christy Glassnit. She did a whole tour of their mill and everything and I fell in love with them. I was just like, they are so cool, so awesome. And getting to meet them in person, oh my gosh, you guys, they're they are great. And I had absolutely no problem throwing down cash to buy these puppies. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is Spin Cycle Yarns, Dyed in the Wool. The top one is called Dead Reckoning. Uh, the middle one is called Smoke and Ash. And then this really lovely, juicy, jammy, berry one is called Nostalgia. And I've been eyeing this colorway online for a really long time. And I just wasn't sure if the colors were true or not, but seeing it in person, I was like, yes, that was, it was meant to be, it's coming home with me. So this is going to become a, a shift shawl, or I wanna say shift cowl uh, by Andrea Maori, who is also there. And I said hello to her too and hugged her and it's, yeah, again, total fangirl moment. Anyway, totally geeked out, totally made an ass of myself, but I'm shameless when it comes to that because I have, I have no problems letting people know how I feel about them and how much they inspire me and make me so happy when it comes to knitting. So anyway, <laughs> came away with these skeins, love it. Um, and then, uh, talking about fangirling, my dreams came true and I met, I met Caitlin Hunter. I saw her and I was like, it's Caitlin Hunter. So I, I tiptoed over as opposed to running and lunging and hugging her. Um, you know, I, I tried to, I tried to tone it down just a little bit, but I tiptoed over to her and I was like, hi. <laughs> Thankfully, she was so sweet. She was so nice. And, you know, I got to chat with her for a little bit, um, although I wish I could have chatted with her for longer. But it was it was just so great getting to meet her and letting her know how much I really, really love the patterns that she puts out. Because seriously, she turns out the patterns so quickly. I can't keep up. I want to just cast on all of them. Um, but yeah, she we were chatting for like, I don't know, two minutes, five minutes, whatever. It was not long enough, but she did an excellent job enabling me. Uh, she's like, check out the Viola booth, it's amazing. And I didn't even realize that Viola was staring me right in the face behind her. Um, and then sure enough, I just, I fell in love with all the colorways. They totally, yeah, anyway. They did have mauve, they did have, they did have a really lovely mauve shade, but you know, I kind of wanted to branch out just ever so slightly and buy something that wasn't mauve for once because they had this really lovely um, kind of like taupe color, I wanna say, but I almost came away with more, but by then my wallet was like giving me the stink eye, so 
I came away with these four skeins. So I'll just hold up two because that, that'll be easier for you guys to see, but oh, it's just so beautiful. And uh, it's this is her sock weight base, and it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and the colorway is called Frozen Earth. And this is its uh, the same color on her mohair base, mohair lace, 72% uh, mohair, 28% silk, and it's just, it's so lovely. And it's dyed in Canada. So um, yeah, it's really, really special yarn. And they're just, the colors, her colors are just incredible. So I picked up two of each, although in hindsight, I should have purchased another two because I think this wants to become like either a no frills cardigan or, oh goodness, what's the other one? I know Amy from Stranded was wearing it on her last podcast. I'll pop it in the down bar below or put a photo of it. But um, yeah, it's just a really simple, very basic, n again, no frills type of uh, pullover. And hopefully, hopefully, Caroline said I should have enough with this because she, she knit a no frills pullover and used two and a half skeins. So um, we'll see. We'll see if that pans out. But anyway, I'm so in love with these colors. I definitely check out Viola Yarns. She's just, she's an incredible dyer. Um, yeah, violaandthemoon.com. So again, I will link to all of these uh, shops in, in the description below where I'm going to put all the show notes, but by now you know that. So that is my Indie Untangled haul. And you guys, Indie Untangled this year was so much fun to shop at this year. I'm going to say, uh, th well, this year they did uh, tiered shopping. So uh, you had to purchase a ticket and you were given a certain amount of time to shop around. But I think that really helped crowd control because last year, if you went to Indie Untangled or heard rumors about Indie Untangled, it was a nightmare. So shopping was really unpleasant. Being a vendor was not pleasant because I was just crammed into a corner and people everywhere and there was just no room to breathe or move. And it was just, again, overall just really unpleasant. And this year they, they had their game together. So uh, it was in a really beautiful, open, airy uh, venue and just, yeah, they, the, the tiered uh, shopping tactic, if you want to call it that, definitely helped a lot because, um, you know, even though you had a time limit, they actually projected a clock on the, on the, on the wall so you could see how much time you had to, to shop and walk around. So while the pressure was kind of on, it really worked for the situation. Uh, the one thing that I really didn't like was that they had this huge lounge, you know, with snacks, food, drinks, what have you. It looked really fun. However, when you have like a two hour time limit to shop, you don't want to spend that time in the lounge. You want to be shopping and talking with people and, you know, moving around the marketplace. So we, Laura and I didn't realize that that was the case. So when our time was up, we wanted to just head over to the lounge, grab it, you know, maybe a coffee or something or a snack. And they said, no, you can't hang out in the lounge. And they basically politely kicked us out. So, um, yeah, that was, that was not cool. Um, I think I, you know, next year, hopefully they might be able to work something out with that because there was space in there. There was space to hang out. Um, I don't think it would have been a hindrance on the next group of shoppers, but anyway, uh, it's definitely a move in the right direction. So, uh, you know, definitely recommend checking out Indian Tangled next year. What else did I want to say? Um, not being a vendor this year. Yeah. If you're familiar, if you're not familiar, I took a year off from vending at Indian Tangled. I don't know if I'm going to be vending again next year. I haven't decided yet. Um, honestly, I really like not vending, <laughs> if that makes sense. I love meeting people. I love meeting fans of the podcast. I love pe meeting people who enjoy my yarns. Believe me, I love that so much. Um, but when I, I just, I love going to festivals and I love just experiencing them as, as a festival goer, not as a vendor. Um, and yeah, this year made such a difference because last year after vending at Indian Tangled, going to Rhinebeck the next day, I just felt like I was hit by a truck. I did not have any energy in me whatsoever. I was walking around like a zombie. Um, this year I was just more awake, more alive. And you know, yeah, I was more human if that makes sense. Um, so I think I'm going to continue doing that. Uh, we'll see, no promises, but you know, we'll, we'll see where I am next year. But yeah, it, it just, it made a world of difference. So I don't know if you 
came up to me, which by the way, if you did come up and say hello to me, thank you so much. It was just so lovely meeting you. Um, and hopefully you could tell that I was just a little more present <laughs> and a little more awake. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for saying hello. And if I didn't get to meet you, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I hope we, I hope you do get to meet next time or very soon at another festival. Um, these, these things are always crazy and trying to run into each other is, you know, always by chance. Anyway, that was a lot of rambling. Uh, thank you. If you're still here, thank you for bearing with me, but I do have more haul to share with you. Um, so the first purchase that I made at Rhinebeck, uh, when Laura and I arrived, uh, we made a beeline to the Fox Hill, Fox Hill Farm booth, and I bought myself some more Cormo, you guys. Um, and this might look familiar. If it does look familiar, you are not mistaken. This is the same skein of yarn that I purchased last year, um, because last year I purchased only two skeins, no idea what to knit with it. And you know, the more I looked at it, the more I was like, I want this to become a sweater. I want it to become a sweater. Um, but lo and behold, there was not enough yardage to make a sweater. So there's 394 yards uh, per skein. And this is 100%, let me see, 100% wool. It's Cormo Cross. And by Cormo Cross, that means it was breeded together with another sheep to get this lovely grayish mocha, mocha brown. Is this like a grayish mocha, I wanna say? It's really beautiful. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I made a beeline and purchased another skein. So now I have three skeins total and I think I can make a sweater out of it. Granted, I probably should have just bought another skein, but anyway, this is this is enough, I think. Um, and I was batting a thousand because I didn't have these other skeins with me. So I'm like, is the dye luck gonna match? Is the dye luck gonna match? But it looks like this is from the same sheep. <laughs> They're from the same sheep, I think. Um, it was a miracle. It was a Rhinebeck miracle. So I have enough yarn now to make a sweater out of my delicious, delicious Cormo. And you guys, Cormo, Cormo's the new cashmere, by the way. I'm, I'm saying it here. It's the new cashmere. It's just so scrummy and soft and, oh gosh, you guys, it's the best. It's the best. Other thing that I, which was actually a gift, <laughs> um, if you guys follow the podcast, you might know that I have a love and affection for loop fiber bumps. Uh, and granted, I have not spun in quite a while. My spinning mojo has kind of been on the downside, uh, so to speak, but uh, this year I, but you can't not go to Rhinebeck and go into the loop fiber studio booth because uh, Stephanie's bumps are just out of this world. They're gorgeous and they're just so pretty. And I almost came away with another, but you know, I. I was being smart and decided I have, I still have two bumps in my stash that I have to spin through. I'm going to say no this time. But, um, this year she introduced yarn into her shop. A really awesome, uh, mill spun. It looks like hand spun, but it's all, uh, it, it looks like hand spun, but it's uh, spun in a mill and she has these really amazing colors. Um, and here are the two skeins that I came away with. These were, by, as I mentioned, a gift from Stephanie, and. Uh, she was just so kind and so generous. But, and she just said, you know, pick two colorways, try it out, let me know what you think of them. And you guys already, I'm in love. I, yeah. This is gonna become something brioche. Yeah, you can see uh, it's like a marled, has like this really cool marled effect to it. And this one is like this really beautiful gold autumnal color with, um, I wanna say like gray or like lavender twists in it. Um, Really, really beautiful stuff. It's worsted weight and 100% extra fine merino, 220 yards per skein, and I cannot wait to cast this on. Um, so stuff, you really did not have to give me two skeins, um, but yeah, at the same time, it's beautiful yarn. Congratulations, and I cannot wait to, to work with it. So yay, but definitely check out her online shop because she has some really, really fun colors. It was a really hard decision for me to choose just two, but um, you know definitely check it out. By that time, Laura and I were pretty knackered, uh, so to speak. Uh, we, we visited all the booths, all the, all the, all the barns. We visited the livestock. We took photos of sheep, pet the sheep. It was wonderful. And then we realized like, okay, we were kind of spent. We, you know, we took some photos of our Rhinebeck sweaters. Um, I'll try and post some photos of them here, but we had a little fun photo shoot. And, uh, after that we decided, you know, it was time to hit the road. Um, we were done shopping and saying hello to people. We did one more turn around the, the main buildings, A, B, and C, and then we didn't realize that there was, uh, 
like it, I think it, in building B where you have all the fleeces, all all the roving and what have you, and then like at the side they have like a, a narrow uh, a narrow aisle with all the books and magazines, and we totally missed it. And uh, when we discovered it, we're like, oh, let's just take a really quick look. And lo and behold, we stumbled on the pom pom booth. We stumbled on the pom pom booth uh, where we picked up these guys. This speaks to my soul. I love it. And this is the latest issue of Pom Pom. It's um, the winter issue with guest editor Nora Gon. And you guys, I got her to sign it. So, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, right there at the bottom. Yay! Got her autograph. And then Catherine, who is the owner of Brooklyn General, by the way, if you didn't know, she designed she designed this beautiful sweater. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the moon is having a moment. I see moons everywhere and it makes me so happy. Um, yeah, but Catherine, uh, who is the shop owner of, I, mean, I don't know her last name, I have to look it up, but I got her to sign it as well. And it says, love you to the moon, Catherine. <laughs> so um, yeah, and this is her, I believe it's called the Ishtel. Ix, Ishel, Ishel pullover. And it's so beautiful. Um, yeah, so, oh, and I saw, I saw this in person, um, and, oh my gosh, you guys. It's so awesome. So, Pom Pom is really, like, I don't know, Pom Pom is not watching this, but I am all about, like, their new look. Like, the, the last two issues, I think, are just... They speak to me. So anyway, anyway, pick these up. And unfortunately I was looking for uh, the Lane, the new Lane magazine. I didn't see it anywhere. So I don't know, I'm not even sure that they had it there, but anyway, I'm um, so glad that I got my mitts on these two, two issues. And yeah, I think, I think that is it for my Rhinebeck haul, guys. That's Rhinebeck. And again, if you want to see the vlog, uh, I will link to it in the show notes below and up here. Uh, and yeah, I cannot, you know, wait for next year. It's, you know, I, I always leave feeling so, I don't know, words can't describe. It's like when you go to a festival and you're just surrounded by your people and you get to meet people that you've only known through the internet or, you know, podcasts. And it's just so, like I always say, it's just such a surreal experience. And I always leave feeling like so fulfilled and warm and fuzzy and oh uh, yeah it's it's so awesome so I hope you guys feel the same way as well um but I think that is the content for the podcast uh if you are interested in my shop updates again please do sign up for my newsletter I will post a link below uh again I send out a, a weekly newsletter letting you know what colorways and bases and other shop update info surrounding Villain Vine Yarns on a weekly basis. It's not spammy at all, I promise. Um, but do check that out and keep an eye on my Instagram feed. I am at Villain Vine in case you are curious. So I think that is it for the episode, guys. I don't really have a blather segment because I pretty much just gave the load to you there in <laughs> this whole episode. Uh, this weekend, I'm just gonna recoup, wind down, uh, get all my ducks in a row, reorganize my stash and uh, you know, just do some knitting and hopefully, I don't know, maybe a little sewing. But thanks so much again for hanging out with me this week. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, please like and subscribe below. I put out a new episode every Friday. So, and you know, lately I've been dabbling in vlogging, so uploading, you know, sometimes two episodes per week. So definitely uh, check that out. And again, apologies for the change of scenery. I will be back in my craft room next week uh, with all the yarny goodness happening around me. Uh, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for bearing with me. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I will leave it there. Happy knitting and I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.